All right, so now that you've chosen your biome, uh, the next step in your biome project is to do your levels of organization drawing. And this drawing is going to bring a whole bunch of concepts together. So we're going to start with that. Um, so first thing you need to do is turn your textbook to page 361. Okay. On page 361, you will see this picture here. Okay. This is the levels of organization for ecology. Now, in the beginning of class, we actually looked at the levels of organization for an organism. So going from an atom, building all the way up to the organism itself. Here, in ecology, it goes from organism, and there's um, six levels, including organism, for levels in ecology. Now, for ecology, we're studying living things, how they interact with each other, and how they interact with their environment. So, these levels actually help scientists study organisms a little bit more closely. Now, in your book, there, it, you might notice I'm saying six levels here, and there's only five levels shown. So there's actually one missing from your textbook, and that is right here. So in between biome and biosphere, there's a level called biome. Okay. So when you do your drawing, um, you're going to include biome in between ecosystem and biosphere. Now this picture here in the book goes from largest level to smallest level. When you do your drawing, I'm going to ask you to do reverse. Go from smallest to largest. Okay? So you're going to go from organism, population, community, ecosystem, biome, biosphere. Okay? Now the levels are pretty self-explanatory. You're going to read about these levels in the book between pages 361 to 362. Um, but the pictures are pretty self-explanatory about what each, what each level is. So an organism is a single individual organism of a species. Population is a group of the same species uh, living in the same area. A community is all of your living things in an area. So a community takes all the different populations, all the different living things, and that builds a community. An ecosystem is all of the living things plus the non-living. So in this picture here, you can see the sunlight, the mountains, the water, um, the dirt. Those would all be the non-living or abiotic factors in a, in a area. So that builds the ecosystem. The biome, uh, you're going to use page 417 to identify the biome. And then finally, the biosphere, which is all the living parts of the Earth. All the living parts in the air, land, and water make up the biosphere. So most students, when they get to biosphere, all they simply do is draw a picture of the Earth. That's the easiest thing to do. All right. So what you'll do is draw a picture that represents all six levels of organization for ecology, um, from smallest to largest. For your picture, you're going to use the information you gathered for your biome, your specific biome. So you're going to use plants and animals that would only be found in your biome. For example, if you chose to do a tropical rainforest, you're not going to draw a polar bear for your organism or a group of polar bears for your population. Um, you want to use only animals that are found in your biome. So don't be the student that makes that mistake and draws some cactus and um, some polar bears, penguins, ice, stuff like that in a tropical rainforest. Okay, so use your organisms and your plants that would be found in your biome. All right, now for some examples. Um, you can set up your paper, so you're going to get a blank sheet of computer paper that the sub's going to pass out to you. Um, this blank sheet of computer paper, you can divide into six boxes. That's usually what most students do, um, but you can also get creative with it. So you can see six boxes here. You have the organism, population, community, ecosystem, biome, biosphere. Um, you don't have to do six boxes, you could get creative. Uh, this person did it, organize it this way into like little triangles. So there's, again, um, organism, there's population, there's community, there's um, ecosystem. Oh, they repeated, never caught that before. Uh, there's, there's the ecosystem with the non-living parts there, um, biome, and then biosphere. This person just drew a whole picture, and then within the picture itself of their biome, they identified the parts. Um, so here is the organism, population, and so on and so on. So you can do something like that as well and box them and identify the parts. 
Um, now remember, you don't have to be the best artist out there. Um, so this person wasn't the best artist, but they did the best they could, and they're, for, to me, their drawing is amazing. Uh, they did a great job, even though they weren't the best artist out there. Um, so again, there's all six levels from smallest all the way up to the largest, which is the biosphere. Okay. Now, what are you going to have to include in your picture? So when you're looking at your picture, you should have, oops, you should have all six levels. Um, so all six levels. You should have a title. So whatever biome you're working with, um, that should be listed somewhere. It doesn't have to be in the center like this, but it should be somewhere on your paper. So you should have the title. Um, you should have a picture that represents each level. You should have the title of each level. And finally, the last thing, you should have the definition of each level. Okay. Um, so explaining what each level is. Now, the definition, for the definition, I do not want you to use the um, book definition. So I don't want you to copy exactly from the book. What I want you to do is uh, read the definition in the book, but I want you to put it into your own words. Simplify it, um, make it so that way if a child was reading it, they would understand what a population is or an organism is. So simplify um, the definition of that level of organization. All right, so here's the directions for you to go over so that way you can uh, look at this uh, as you start to set up your paper and begin. So remember, six levels from smallest to largest, including biome, don't forget biome. Okay, uh, and you're going to use uh, page 417, it shows down here at the bottom. You're going to use page 417 to help you identify one continent for your biome. So let me show you here. Um, savannas are found in different parts of the world. This person used page 417 and found where uh, savannas were located in Africa, and then they color in those parts on uh, the African continent. Um, they could have chosen Australia and colored in the parts of Australia where the savannas are found. Um, so for biome, you're going to just simply identify a continent and identify exactly where your biome was found on that continent. Okay. Um, don't forget to include the name of your biome on your picture. Uh, the picture should have definitions in your own words. The picture should be colored. Remember, all projects include effort as part of your grade. And uh, again, don't forget to use page 417 to identify where your biome is. All right, now you're going to have some time, uh, about 20 minutes or so, to work on your drawing. Um, now, if you're one of those people that feel more comfortable drawing at home, I understand that, but you cannot waste your time right now. So uh, everybody should be working on their drawing. Um, if you're one of those people that are going to draw at home, uh, you need to be uh, looking up the definitions, maybe writing them down on a separate sheet of paper, maybe sketching out what you want to do for your drawing, choosing the animals that you're going to want to include, the plants you're going to want to include, um, identifying a continent where your biome is found. So you should have something to do during this time. Um, sitting there is not an option. Don't forget that. So go ahead and get started.